Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm so pleased you could join us for the third event in our spring series, Campus Connections. I'm Jay Davenport, Vice President of Development and Alumni Relations at VCU. As loyal members of the Founders Society, Heritage, Heritage Society, MCV Society, our President's Club, Black and Gold Society, VCU Alumni Life Member Society, and the College of Health Profession Supporters, you're an important part of the VCU community. We are excited to, do, to include you this evening and offer you this exclusive opportunity to go behind the scenes at one of our premier academic institutions, the College of Health Professions. Now, before we start this evening, I do have a few housekeeping notes. Tonight's event is being recorded and we will share a link with you after the event is over. We would also invite you to offer your comments and questions. Please locate the Q&A chat box on their screen. And if at any point you think of a question, just type it in there and I'm gonna answer those during the discussion portion of the event near the end. Captions are also available by clicking on the three dots or the more button at the bottom of your Zoom panel and choose the live transcript option. If you do that, you will have closed captioning during the entire event. Now, as many of you know, the College of Health Professions building officially opened its doors in the spring of 2019 as a collaborative learning space for students and faculty in integrated healthcare. The building brought together the college's nine departments under one roof for the first time and located those from five different buildings from across two campuses, allowing our students and faculty to collaborate in ways that were just not previously possible. In addition to providing the space for collaboration, the 154,000 square foot facility, the eight story building allows for increased enrollment and faculty retention, provides dedicated labs and research space, and adds more space for high demand programs such as physical therapy. We'll learn more about the College of Health Professions building later this evening during your exclusive tour of the facility. But first, we're gonna hear from several grateful Health of College Professions students who have benefited from support like, from donors like you. Please enjoy this video. Having nine departments in one building creates phenomenal opportunities for us to provide interprofessional education for our students. In addition to academic performance, career counseling, we are focusing on students' wellness, their well-being. Once I graduate with my master's, I plan to pursue research uh, in regards to helping elders in the Latin community or elders who experience difficulty with the English language and getting the, any help that they need and uh, getting them a better quality of life in the United States. We know that many of our students face unexpected financial challenges and other financial barriers that have the potential to derail them from their studies. While COVID-19 exacerbated these challenges, they existed before the pandemic and will continue to exist long after COVID-19 is behind us. To address this need, we created the Student Emergency Fund. Students can use awarded funds toward living expenses like groceries and rent, or towards educational expenses like tuition and books. Our goal is to ensure that every CHP student has access to emergency resources during their time of need, enabling them to stay in school and to continue to progress toward their degree. When I was in high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I know the route I wanted to take was definitely healthcare, but I know I didn't want to go like the nursing or like medical school route. Honestly, the College of Health Professions is the, like the best. And you can honestly tell they genuinely care about their students. They want them to excel in their studies and in life. VC was one of the like main programs close to home. And uh, the OT department is ranked 15th in the nation, so I thought what better option than to be at home with a nationally renowned program. I do have a couple of part-time jobs outside of school. COVID put me out of my part-time work. I actually had just gotten into a car accident in Richmond. It was just a scary experience. 
I had to pay a lot out of pocket, but I applied for the emergency relief fund, was able to get back or be reimbursed what I owed to the insurance company, which helps a lot because I don't want to be like a financial burden to my mom because she's, she's done so much for me. During COVID, she has a small business, so it really hit us hard. She has to pay for my older sister too and me. So just having that relief fund definitely helped me as a student because it's just like, I don't have that financial burden. It just really helped me um, cover my educational expenses, like Wi-Fi, um, computer maintenance if I had to go to like the help desk, gas commuting to and from school when I had in-person labs, even though those were limited, books, tuition. So it really did, it, it gave me, it took some weight off my shoulders and gave me a little less worry as to financially what I had to cover while in school. So I'm really thankful for that. People should support CHP because these students are the future of healthcare. We can't expect students to um, perform the best that they can do can be once they get on the field if they don't have necessary tools while they're in school. So providing students with these funds helps them not focus so much more on the financial and take away time from their studies and they can really focus on what they're trying to do, which is become healthcare professionals. As you can see, the CHP Student Emergency Fund is having a tremendous impact on our students. Thank you to all the donors for CHP. It's greatly appreciated as a student. We couldn't have gotten this far without you guys. Without your donations, I would not have been able to continue. It has made a big difference in regards to my uh, educational and career goals. To the donors who contributed to the CHP COVID fund, I just want to say my most sincerest thank you. You really have helped students' lives for the better and helped us focus on what our priority should be, which is school throughout this pandemic. So thank you again, and we're going to be better students and better healthcare professionals for it. Welcome back. At this time, we'd like to give you an exclusive behind the scenes tour of the state of the art College of Health Professions building, which serves as a visual reflection of the college and BCU's commitment to preparing students to be the very best in their chosen fields. Private donor support was critical for enhancing the interior of the facility by funding equipment, technology, and other resources that allow students to receive a top quality education and prepare them for careers in healthcare. Thank you so much to every one of you who helped make this dream a reality. Please enjoy the tour. This is really the first time in the history of the college that all nine departments are in the same building. Being in the same building actually has a lot of advantages. Geographic proximity has created opportunities for interdisciplinary research. And the other thing is the same location creates opportunity for interprofessional education. VCU has made successful strive towards student-centeredness. In the college, we have an office of student success not just student affairs. In addition to academic performance, career counseling, we are focusing on students' wellness, their well-being. This state of the art facility enhances our ability to offer exceptional interdisciplinary research and scholarship experiences. Level one has modern and inviting spaces there is a 160-seat glass bond auditorium. Classrooms on this level are furnished to maximize flexibility and accommodate various teaching styles and methods. Level two, which houses the dean's office, is all about hands-on training. The state-of-the-art smart apartment is designed for training students in how to assist people with limited mobility with activity of daily living. The acute care simulation suite replicates hospital rooms and instructors observe students via video feeds from adjacent rooms. 
in the tech center, also on this floor. Faculty and staff train on the latest hardware and software. Level three houses the departments of nurse anesthesia and radiation sciences. The state-of-the-art center for research in human simulation used by nurse anesthesia students includes a surgical suite complete with pre-post operating room, an obstetric delivery room, laboratory space, and full-body human simulators. For radiation sciences students, new technologies enhance training and instruction. The Department of Physical Therapy resides on level four. Generous lab space provides capacity for combining teaching and research and enables labs to be in use simultaneously. Access to the variety of equipment, technology, and materials used in contemporary physical therapy practice in which student instruction. Level 5 houses the Department of Occupation Therapy. The space is anchored by expanded teaching and lab areas designed for collaborative learning, as well as a 50-person lecture room for large classes. The floor's unique rooftop patio and garden is open year-round for students and is available for meetings and special events. Level 6 provides a home for medical laboratory sciences that helps attract students to the program, highlighted by a large research area with 48 web bench spots. Gerontology, patient counseling, rehabilitation counseling, and the Virginia Center on Aging share level 7. Console rooms with video technology and study areas with standing desks and write on pens allows for collaborative counseling sessions and aging related research. Level 8 is home to the Department of Health Administration. All study areas and classrooms are outfitted with cutting edge teaching technology. The building matches the outstanding caliber of our nationally acclaimed academic programs. It is a visible reflection of the college's and VCU's commitment to preparing students to be the very best in their chosen fields. It is a truly stunning facility. Now at this time, I'd like to formally introduce our special guest for the evening, Dr. Susan Parrish, Dean of the College of Health Professions, an expert in public health, Susan came to VCU in 2019 from Northeastern University, where she served as Dean and Professor of Health Sciences at the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. At the Bouvet, she led a faculty of 200 and oversaw more than 30 undergraduate, masters, and doctoral programs with 4,700 students. Susan has been a faculty member at Brandeis University and the School of Social Work at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Susan's research addresses the health and financial well-being of women and children with disabilities and their caregiving families. She's been funded by a wide range of federal, state, and foundation sources. Her current work is supported by the NIH, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research. She holds a BA in English Literature and an MSW from Rutgers University and a PhD in Public Health from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Susan, thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, Jay, it's great to be with you. Thanks so much for inviting me. Now, we do reserve uh, a special introduction for certain deans with a brand new building. So uh, it's a wonderful way to start a new deanship at an institution. <laughs> but talk to us about since your arrival in 2019, how has the college begun to change or, or grow in that new facility? Yeah, well, you know, as you saw in the video, the building is is just 
it's absolutely breathtaking. And, you know, you get the sense of it from the outside, just seeing it, and you walk in, and, and what is really striking is the combination of, um, it's gorgeous, but it's incredibly functional. And you saw in the video, you know, students are learning in exactly the types of settings that they're going to ultimately graduate and practice in. So, you know, being here has, has just been amazing. Um, in terms of changes since 2019, nothing much is different, you know, we don't know much about a pandemic or anything else. <laughs> um, you know, we were in the building for 10 months before the pandemic hit, and um, it was really terrific that we were together because um, we absolutely needed to come together as a college and as a leadership team to support our students through their education during this terrible time. And, um, you know, being able to collaborate across the building in terms of research and teaching has really been just an enormous game changer for our college. Now, having a PhD in public health and then um, and a worldwide pandemic hits, uh, it is truly a unique situation. So talk to us about that adaptation you were talking about during COVID-19. What do you need to do as a dean of a college to help the students, the faculty, and then any of the research that's going on during that time? Yeah, sure. So it's a great question. You know, top of mind for our faculty and staff, and certainly for me as well, has just been the desperate need that the healthcare workforce has for our students. So job one through the pandemic was, how are we going to graduate our students on time? You know, the workforce needs them. We're really fortunate. We have nearly 100% employment right after graduation. Most of our students graduate and already have accepted jobs in the healthcare system, whether at VCU Health or, um, or elsewhere. And so the, the top priority for us was stay the course, be safe. So we, of course, we implemented all of the um, safety and health practices that the university put together in terms of, um, you know, symptom checking, hand washing, the use of, um, of PPE masks and, and, you know, gowns and everything. Um, but we also were adamant that we were going to do everything we could to graduate our students. And so there was a lot of negotiation, frankly, with our clinical sites to make sure that students could continue their clinical rotations and that they would continue making progress toward their degrees. And the thing, you know, looking out over an incredibly difficult year and a half, I am so proud of the fact that we graduated every single student on time. Wow. We did it in May of 2020, again in August and December of 2020, and we just did it again in May of 2021. And it's because of the hard work and the I mean, just the sheer determination of the faculty and, and staff, and frankly, the resilience of the students who hung in there with us and said, okay, you know, we're in a virtual environment for many of our classes, but we're going to figure it out. And um, it's just, it, I don't know. I'm so proud of our community. We are, we're thriving despite everything. And that's a pretty remarkable thing to be able to say in this time. Absolutely. And it's a true testament to um, what's so uh, special and important about the health professions in general. Yeah. One of the things that I'm always struck when I'm in the building is the unique opportunities for collaboration among the departments. And it's probably um, a college that has more departments that regularly collaborate in the natural space in a hospital setting or healthcare setting. So talk about that. How has the building enhanced those opportunities? Sure. Well, it, it's really it's really been amazing because, um, you know, when I started, the building had only been open for, I think, a month and a half. And I kept having this situation of I would see two faculty in the hall and I'm thinking, well, I'm the new guy. And in fact, they wouldn't have even necessarily met each other because they worked on different campuses. So an awful lot of the time, 
time and, and you know during the first 10 months that we were together was just getting to know each other and learning about the research that is being done across the the college and so um I, i've been so pleased but um you know we've realized a 28 percent increase in research funds this year against 2018 and that's really because of the collaborative opportunities that this beautiful building makes possible and the space that we have. Um, we've also seen, um, you know, an 11% increase in our enrollment. So we're enrolling more students, we're involving them in interprofessional education, as Associate Dean Daniel Lee mentioned in the video. So we're seeing really nice things where, um, you know, faculty from nurse anesthesia, for example, are collaborating with faculty in radiation sciences, and they are um, creating new research about, you know, how do you use ultrasound to assist in the delivery of, of anesthesia? So, and I think we're really only at the beginning of, of this and the potential is extraordinary. And again, it's because of the building and the chance that we have to be together and work, and work together. So as students start coming back on campus, we start opening the buildings back up and um, uh, we return to some semblance of normal or pre-COVID environment. What's your biggest priority for the college as everybody uh, recongregates on campus? Sure. So, you know, health and safety are always going to be our top priorities. And um, we were really fortunate because, you know, when the governor sent us all home in March, um, we on, on the MCV campus, we were actually allowed to return to our building if it was necessary. And so for several of our disciplines, um, you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy, nurse anesthesia, radiation sciences, and medical lab sciences, you can't teach these things virtually. You know, you've got to lay hands on people, you've got to learn how to intubate and, and all of the things that our students are learning. So those students have actually been back in the building since last June, and our faculty have been as well. So what we're looking forward to in the fall is the return of the departments that have been virtual. So health administration, gerontology, um, patient counseling, and rehabilitation counseling. So those have been virtual and, you know, they're starting to come back now. Um, and, and, you know, we have to be thoughtful about safety and health. I'm hoping that we're going to have near full participation in vaccination because we know that that's what um, we need to stay safe. Um, but, you know, we've done a beautiful job adhering to all of the guidance. And, and I'm really proud of the fact that we've not had any transmission of virus in our building during the pandemic, despite the fact that we had so many faculty, staff, and students who were, you know, who were here, present, working every day. Wow, very, very impressive. Yeah. Now, each dean, uh, deanship at different institutions, and, and even here at VCU, is different. So how has been, how has the CHP deanship uh, differed from previous roles at other institutions that you've had? Oh, sure. So I love VCU. I love, I mean, I can't even tell you how much I love this university. And, you know, I joined VCU because I strongly believe in our mission. And the mission is absolutely aligned with the, the goals that I have as a leader in academia. And, you know, I, I think, though, that since I joined the university, what I've really come to appreciate is the platform that we have for research and training of students that exists because of the relationship between the university and the VCU health system, which is, it's so exceptional. And, you know, our departments are tightly integrated, and it's really a seamless relationship in so many ways. And that partnership, that platform, it allows us to provide our students with a, literally a world-class educational experience. And, you know, as you know, Jay, um, we have five departments that U.S. News and World Report does its rankings on. All five are top 20. Um, several of them are top five. Uh, you know, the reason that we are as strong as we are is because of the extraordinary faculty that we have and also this amazing partnership and relationship with VCU health system. So I feel 
you know, it's a privilege for me to be the dean here, and I don't take it for granted. And I, I still sometimes have to pinch myself as I walk in the building and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe I get to work another day here. Yeah. I do know what you mean about VCU. I've, I've been at um, a couple of institutions myself, and there is something so uniquely special about VCU, the students that we serve, and our relationship with uh, Richmond and the Commonwealth. It's, it's nearly the perfect institution. It is the perfect institution. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about what you enjoy most about being dean. Well, for me, it, it all is about the people. So I have loved getting to know the faculty and staff and, and some of our students. We have an incredible team. And, you know, many of our faculty and staff have been here for decades and their work is exceptional. And so, you know, as the dean, my job is to support the faculty and to support the staff. And, you know, I'm the chief cheerleader. I love that part of my job. And and, you know, the work is exceptional. So being able to collaborate with them has, has been wonderful. Um, I also really love the chance to partner across the campus. So, you know, with the other four health science schools, and we're collaborating more and more with Monroe Park campus as well. And it's just, it, this is a, it's such a special university because, you um, everyone is just all in for the students and we're all here going in the same direction and and i love that part the most i love the collaboration so tell us you know people see the dean um people uh, interact with the dean uh in in the uh the schools either from a faculty standpoint or a student standpoint but tell us something about yourself that might surprise people something they might not actually know about you um well, I'm a VCU parent as well. And so um, our younger daughter just completed her first year here and um, she absolutely fell in love with the university. I think she fell in love with the freedom that she has also, <laughs> um, which I won't talk about now, but it, it's been, you know, it, it's been extraordinary to understand the university from a parent's perspective and also to see it through my daughter's eyes. And, um, you know, I have so much respect for my colleagues who supported our students. Our, our daughter lived in one of the dorms on the other campus campus and um, unfortunately her roommate uh, got COVID and so oh, I got wow. to see up close and personal how the university handled it and they did a gorgeous job and my daughter did not um, you know, she didn't get COVID, and I think it's really because of all of the precautions that the university took to safeguard, you know, her and, and everyone living in wow. her dorm. So, you know, I mean, we wouldn't wish this year on anyone, um, but I just, my respect for the university only grew through this experience. It really did. It's it's so true when you see um, uh, the impact that the students had. and. In some cases, we we were the only home for students to go to. Absolutely. And so even some of the emergency sheltering that we had to provide. So um, you know, it's it's a, it's a true testament to everybody involved and high respect for uh, residents life for getting us through that period. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Susan, over the next couple of years, um, what's on the horizon? What can we expect from the college as we come out uh, from the pandemic? and then really are able to utilize the building to its fullest. Yeah, sure. So really exciting for us is the launch of our new Bachelors of Science in Health Services. So uh, the Commonwealth approved this new bachelor's degree in January, and we've been, you know, ramping up to accept this new cohort of undergraduates. I'm really excited about this. It's actually a, a little bit similar to a bachelor's in healthcare administration that the college used to offer, a program that was discontinued 
continued in the early 1990s. Um, but what, what I think is wonderful about this new bachelor's degree is that it's going to provide another pipeline for students who want to work in healthcare, but you know, perhaps they're not thinking about medicine or nursing, which seem to be, you know, what most students think of when they think about health. So I'm excited that we're going to be recruiting students into healthcare, into a workforce that needs them desperately. Um, and it's also going to support our efforts to diversify the healthcare workforce, which is both part of VCU's strategic plan and it's something that, you know, the Institutes of Medicine for decades has been calling for us to diversify the healthcare workforce to better reflect the patient populations we serve. So this is really exciting and we're expecting it to just take off. So we have a we have just so much to look forward to and so much to be optimistic about. And um, you know, it, it's a it, it's just you know, as I'm finishing my my second year in another week or two, um, just what really I think about a lot is the privilege that it is to be here and the privilege it is to be part of this great institution. And, you know, I'm really, I, I just feel blessed in every way, so. Well, that's so well said. Um, Susan, thank you so much. If you don't mind, I'd like to open it up to uh, questions from the audience as well. Uh, if you would like, please answer or enter any of your questions that you have for Dean Parrish in the uh, Q&A chat box, and I will get to as many of these as we can over the next 10 minutes. Um, type your question in there, and then I will make certain I ask. So the very first question submitted is about the lab science um, students, and it says, are lab science students prepared for a national accreditation exams? And if so, which ones and what's the rate of pass fail of those exams? Okay, so um, I don't off the top of my head know the name of the, the, the certification exam. Yes, absolutely. So across our entire college, this is true not just in med, med lab, but across every, um, every program, um, students are being prepared for um, national, you know, some of them are called boards, some of them are called certification or, um, you know, another other names. Um, our pass rates across the college are well in the 90s, 90% um, on the first try, and we generally achieve 100% passage within two attempts. So students, in, and the thing is that it's very important that students pass this, or of course, you know, they can't um, secure the positions that, that they want to have and that the, the health care workforce needs. So that's a great question. We have exceptionally strong um, pass rates. That is very, very strong. The next question is, can you give us a little insight into what goes on behind the scenes of running a college? Sure. Um, you know, so my job as dean is divided into a few different things. I mean, um, I supervise the department chairs who supervise all the faculty. And, um, you know, so what we're always working on is what can we do to improve the student experience? How can we ensure that our students have just an exceptional education and, and an education that's rigorous and tough? And, you know, if you talk to our, our students, you know, what you learn is the faculty are nurturing and caring, but they also are very serious. They set really high standards. We have, um, you know, we need to make sure that the folks that we graduate who join, join the workforce, that they're going to do an excellent job in terms of patient safety, in terms of delivery of care. So that's one piece of it. Um, another important part of my role, of course, is oversight of our budget. And so uh, the budget for our our college right now is about $32 million, all sources all in, and um, administering that um, is a very important part of my, my job. You know, we are, we need to be really conscientious stewards of the trust that the citizens of Virginia have placed in us. And so that's a responsibility I take very carefully. And, you know, I try to be very frugal. Um, we all try to be very frugal with the resources that we have. Um, and, and then another part of the work that 
that I do, of course, is in partnership, Jay, with your team, which is development and raising money for the college. You know, I have two priorities that really um, keep me up at night in terms of, um, you know, things I'm thinking about related to fundraising, and that's the affordability of our programs. You know, everyone knows that student debt is a national crisis. And, you know, I really worry about what we're doing to ensure that our students can graduate and can enter the workforce and aren't saddled with such, you know, oppressive debt. Um, and, you know, not all of our students are going into fields that are paying, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, let me say. So, you know, everything we can do to make it an affordable education is really important. The other thing that I think an awful lot about, particularly, you know, related to development is, um, is how are we recruiting and retaining faculty? So another national trend, of course, is that the professoriate across the country is aging and they're retiring. And what are we doing to ensure that the new faculty we recruit are going to be the stars of today and tomorrow and who will continue? You know, we have such a history of excellence in education. And I don't want our educational offerings to suffer in any way as we are seeing faculty retire. And so um, we work really hard to compete for faculty and, you know, we're competing, frankly, head to head with other great universities for students and we compete with them for faculty. And so development is something that I think an awful lot about and, and the resources that we can offer to attract our faculty and and our students. Um, and then, you know, there are also um, the parts of my job that just involve being engaged in our community, um, you know, being, you know, advancing the mission of health education, both in Virginia and nationally. And, and those are really important parts of my job as well. You know, we're building partnerships right now with some of the community colleges to have an easy pipeline into the college. And those are very important. Um, parts of the work that we're doing too. So absolutely. Yeah. Now the next question you you literally just answered. So I'm going to read it so the person knows that we did we we did see it, but it's how can donors help the college achieve its goals over the next few years? And I think you covered those with with uh, great information there. And so the next question is a two-parter. What's been your favorite and what's been the most unexpected moment in your time at the college so far? Okay, um, so one thing that was really extraordinary that I got to, ex well, two, I'll say two, two experiences. I can't only pick one. Um, so in the Center for Human, for Research on Human Simulation, which you showed, you know, in the video, um, we have operating rooms and our nurse anesthesia students learn in there. And one of the activities that they do is a critical incident simulation. And so literally the faculty are, you know, they're acting as a surgeon and, um, you know, nurses and, and whatnot. And then the student is, is in the room to deliver the anesthesia and is learning how to manage a, a difficult situation and um, I was able to sit in the control room and watch this happen and learn how they were training the students and um, some of what the students needed to grapple with was absolutely extraordinary. I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, I will tell you, uh, one of the exercises was, what do you do when a patient is going into distress and the surgeon is yelling at you to hurry up and administer the anesthesia? And it was just so eye-opening and it really helped me to have a better appreciation for the pressure that is put on um, nurse anesthetists when they are out in practice. And that was fabulous and fascinating. The other situation I had, um, I was not that familiar with patient counseling, which is chaplaincy. And I had the opportunity to um, shadow our palliative care chaplain mm. um, for a, you know about a half a day. And I, I went with him um, and 
it, it was extremely emotional, extremely moving. And, you know, to be able to see the impact that a chaplain can make on the lives of not just the person who was dying, but also um, their loved ones and their family. And, um, you know, it, it's it's a part of healthcare that I think a lot of folks don't necessarily think about. You know, it's not the thing that uh, jumps to mind right away, but it's incredibly important for the well-being of, of the patients who are being served. And what we've seen through the pandemic is that the chaplains have have really supported the staff in the health system and supported their well-being. And I felt so privileged to be able to spend that time um, you know, with with our, our chaplains. It, it just was an, an amazing experience, absolutely. Some of the stories our chaplains share are some of the most heartwarming and moving absolutely. that you'll ever hear, so. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, I wanna thank everybody for the wonderful and insightful questions and comments tonight. Uh, Susan, I'd also really like to thank you for dedicating your time with us tonight. Uh, I'd also like to thank every one of you for all that you do to support BCU and the College of Health Professions. Your care and engagement make a huge difference in our university and our community, and we are so very grateful. Susan, thanks so much for offering your time tonight. Oh, and Jay, for it's my pleasure to be here, and I love BCU and I love our college, and I'll show it off anytime you like. So thank you very <laughs> much for giving us the opportunity. Absolutely wonderful. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us.